Welcome back everyone to another video and in this one we'll be taking a look at Fedora images for ARM. Now Fedora has been supporting the ARM architecture for quite a while now we'll be taking a look at Fedora 26. So the way most operating systems support ARM images is by having separate image for separate devices. Uh, our clinics does that and pretty much everyone else now the way fedora does it is they have one single image and one single kernel to boot on every board now we'll be seeing how they achieve this and how it works on different boards for today's uh, video we are using two development boards very very different ones we have the raspberry pi 3 that is using a 64 bit uh, cortex a53 broadcom cpu and then we have a banana pi m1 which is using a fairly old a cortex a7 all winner a20 chipset and we'll be using a single fedora minimal image right here just because it's small and easy and it flashes faster and you can see i have it downloaded right there so fedora minimal uh, arm hard float and that's the image we are going to use this single image is compatible across multiple devices so to get started we are going to go ahead and install a program that's called fedora arm installer and yes this is only uh, compatible with fedora based operating systems so i am running fedora 26 so here you can see cat etc os uh, release and we have it running as fedora 26 uh, and that is what my main system is I'm recording it on my laptop right now so what we have to do is go ahead and install fedora arm installer so this would be as simple as fedora uh, dnf install uh, fedora arm installer and give it the password wait for a few seconds and it should be installed now as you can see I have already installed it so I don't have to go through all of the process so let's go ahead and uh, so I need to install it for the Raspberry Pi now here in the uh, example command line I'm shown that the target is banana pie but I need to find out what all targets are supported so what I'll do is go ahead and see what all targets are supported uh, with this command so that basically outputs the supported boards file that is installed when you are installing the fedora arm installer and that gives us a nice little list of all the boards that are supported which is pretty extensive so we have the all winner boards a lot of them because they basically use a similar sort of bootloader so we have our banana pie that uses the a20 chipset we have a few that uses the a13 chipset and again a few uses the a31 chipset so mostly devices that are uh, 32 bit then we have a a33 a23 chipsets as well we have mx6 devices which are all 32 bit we have omap devices which is uh, the uh, beagle bone uh, series uh, and then we have the uh, st conductors and others as well we have the nvidia tegra jetson tk1 and of course the raspberry pi 2 and the raspberry pi 3 in 32 bit mode and uh, an older trim slice uh, device that is i think running on the tegra uh, 3 C, uh, soc from nvidia so that's is a pretty extensive list for a single image now this will grow with fedora 27 bringing in support for arm 64 architecture as well a lot of 96 boards is going to be officially supported so let's go ahead with all that said and uh, go ahead and flash the sd card for our raspberry pi so let's copy this example command and i'll uh, go ahead and tell you what all i am doing so we'll keep this here we'll keep the board list here and on the other terminal we can now go ahead and insert our uh, sd card and then we can actually uh, come on uh, see our sd card here so we are sdb1 or sdb uh, because it's going to be reflashed anyway so uh, we need sudo here because it's a root operation so sudo sudo fedora arm image installer uh, image name needs to be changed to whatever you are using uh, so in this case it is fedora minimal now uh, you don't need to extract the xz archive it does it automatically since it's using xzcat 
and we can go ahead and paste that here target is rpi3 from the list and we can go ahead and set it as rpi3 media as we said is sdb so sdb there it goes sc linux now just for the sake of it i'm going to turn it on so let's go ahead press enter and see what happens it asks for a password then it says that all data will be destroyed and i'm fine with that i don't like data anyways so uh, let's go ahead and write it down so this will take a while uh, maybe 5 to 10 minutes depending upon the speed of your sd card and anyways if you are actually uh, you know using your sd card it's better to have a faster one like a class 10 at least uh, so as the operating system actually runs smoother but uh, with that said for the raspberry pi you can actually go ahead and directly flash this image the extracted image uh, onto the sd card using the dd command it will work but for other devices as we will see you will actually need this command to specially boot them so we'll uh, wait and let it do its job and i'll get back to you once it's done all right so that is done and as you can see no u-boot will be installed because as i said it doesn't need a specific bootloader or anything you can directly flash this image as well but uh, now we can go ahead eject our sd card and go ahead and run it on the raspberry pi 3 now the raspberry pi 3 needs some additional configuration to get the uart port running since uh, there is issues with the bluetooth and uh, all of that stuff being on uart so instead of uh, going ahead and giving you guys a uart output i'll show it on the uh, monitor so the boot is pretty it boots up pretty well and with the raspberry pi 3 you can also uh, use other images that have support for displays and stuff So with that booted and tested out let's go ahead and take a look at banana pie as well. So again we'll insert our same SD card back onto uh, our Fedora OS uh, the host device. Now in this command line which we use to flash our raspberry pi I have to change nothing else but simply the target. So here I can add simply ba banana pie uh, and again recheck from the list that the name is correct which it is it is supposed to be banana pie there go ahead press enter and now it will start as you can see proceed to install for the u-boot target banana pie and select yes here and wait for it to install so now banana pie and other boards require special u-boot uh, images bootloaders that would boot uh, sort of bootstrap the uh, linux kernel onto it and that should work so with the banana pie the hdmi does work you can see the output but uh, that is for later all right so we are done with the banana pie image and as you can see uh, it does have writing you boot uh, sunsi sungsi i think that's the that's the model number for uh, banana pie chipsets so writing you boot uh, and uh, that's the area where it actually writes the bootloader specific to the banana pie uh, so once that is done we can actually remove the uh, thumb drive or the sd card now do remember it is the exact same image the exact same linux kernel that we had flashed on to our 
Raspberry Pi. Now, in the case of Banana Pi, I am actually going to use UART to show you all the output. Maybe we can go a bit deeper into the functioning of the operating system. So, from here, I can turn on Picocom and then connect the UART uh, as well as micro USB onto the Banana Pi, and we can see it boot. So there we go, the banana pie has started to boot. So this is the uh, U-boot part and you can see it shows the Fedora minimal uh, image right there. Uh, and uh, it has, so now it's starting the Fedora's Linux kernel. We'll wait for it and let's see where it goes. <laughs> All right, so this is the uh, sort of the configuration part of the Fedora ARM minimal images. Uh, now uh, it's booted on the Banana Pi, and what we can go ahead and do is uh, set that up. So we can go ahead and select the time zone settings. So let's select the time zone we are in. Uh, that would be Asia, and then this would be. Uh, 40 and that is our time zone uh, let's go and create a root password so here it is with that done we can go ahead and create a user now so we'll simply create a user to full name username we need a username for that so enter a username Alright, see, and then enter a user password. That is done, and now we can make the user an administrator. So that is done as well. So now see to continue, and we are back here. So you must set a password. Password is set. okay password is set continue and that is we are done so now we can finish up with the boot and take a look at few other things there it is so we can log in as the user so you can see we have a fairly recent version of the kernel right here kernel is 4.11 now if I go ahead and do a proc and a cat proc com and cpu info you can see we are running on dual uh, all winner a20 cpu so that's it we are uh, that's the sort of a proof that we are running on the all winner a20 kernel version is 4.11 you can go ahead and do a sudo dnf upgrade and see if any recent kernels are available so okay so as you can see there is an upgrade to the kernel 4.11.11 and that is 
the exact kernel that I'm running on my main system so uh, if I go back to the other terminal and do a U name A you can see I am also running 4.11.11-300 and that is the exact kernel we have right here so yes uh, Fedora images do run uh, mainline kernel at least upstream for Fedora 26 and then uh, mostly mainline all the way alright so that was it for this video I hope you all enjoyed it and uh, I hope you all go ahead and give Fedora arm a try maybe on different boards that you have let me know in the comments down below uh, if you uh, have gotten this image to work on multiple boards that you own so again a lot of orange pi pcs and orange pi pluses and all of those are supported and then uh, a lot of beagle bone blacks as well so again thank you so much for watching uh, thanks to the fedora arm team to get all of that working and in a nice little package so we don't have to download multiple images for every other board that we have uh, thanks for liking commenting and subscribing and i'll see you all in the next one